Dude, what are you what are you doing? What are you pacing for? Psyching up, man. Is this the get in helmet? I don't trust these doors. You don't need the get in helmet. This is for the I8. That's a weird car. This is an SLS. It's the Mercedes. It's easy. You can just step in. Okay. It's ridiculous, All honestly. Alright. All right. <laughs> get in helmet. This thing's so funny. So you don't need it for this thing. James? Oh no. Oh, James? James, you all right? Uh, okay, yeah, no, very funny. That was fine. Yeah, as if you actually needed a helmet. Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. And I'm James. And this is the legendary SLS AMG. Roll back the clocks to 2011 and a few special names appear. The Audi R8, the McLaren MP412C, Lamborghini Gallardo Superleggera, GT3 RS 4.0, Ferrari 458. And of that list, only some of them has the world deemed more valuable since the day of their release. The SLS AMG is worthy of that honor. A 2012 model, like this one, with well under 10,000 miles, graciously provided by the people at MVL Leasing in Oakville, Ontario, now commands a price of over $300,000 Canadian. And we want to find out why. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. It is violent. 6.2 litre, naturally aspirated V8, pumping out 563 horsepower. This is the absolute golden age of 63. How far we have fallen. This reminds me of what it can be. And we, we've played with this engine in the E63 old versus new, the C63 old versus new, or at least a version of this engine. This is the M159, an uprated, modified, crazed version made for the SLS. Don't get me wrong, the 63s that came after this, the 63s that came after this were four litre turbo, twin turbo engines, and they were fantastic, so potent, so powerful, but they did lose a bit of character. And then obviously since then, Things like the C63 have got these plug-in hybrid four cylinders. I don't even know. From the seat of this car, if that was my grandson, I would disown it. Because, just listen, just listen to pure 6.2 liter AMG for a second. as quick as those do. This has an AMG seven-speed transmission, but 
downshifts are not particularly quick, and that's in manual mode. And the manual mode is supposed to be even quicker at shifting than Sport Plus. Upshifts, if you wait a red line, will knock your head forward because it's not quite fast enough. So you have to use the shift lights in front of you, which are always awesome. Even in a Honda Civic Si, shift lights are awesome. The thing that you can count on with Mercedes is that whatever generation you pick, minus the most recent one, the 63s across the board all share this absurd character and so i thought getting into this that it would just feel like a stretched c63 and it otherwise would have been a bit of a russian doll but it's not it, it, it's so different the spoiler's gone up at the back because i've reached a certain naughty speed but yet i'm still every smile still has some level of grimace to it it's slightly strained because I am scared. <laughs> it is a scary car. It doesn't, you know, it's a cold day. There's, it snowed yesterday. It doesn't want traction. It is tail happy. It wants to kill me. And this has a transaxle. Basically, that means that instead of the transmission being attached to the engine near the front, it's actually at the back, incorporated into the back axle and differential. And that transmission, interestingly, is shared with the Ferrari 458. Except where Ferrari turned the shift speed up to 11 and as a result occasionally made those transmissions go boom boom, Mercedes took a slightly more sensible German approach and made sure that the SLS would last. But, it's not the durability that interests me, it's the weight distribution. Since the transmission is back there and the engine is very much on this side of that front axle, actually it's right about the middle here of the car, this has a wonderful weight distribution. It's actually a little bit biased over the rear. That's what you want in a really sporty car, so it can put the power down, except it's not working. It doesn't put the power down. <laughs> just wants to lose the rear all the time. <laughs> you can feel it just constantly squatting and moving and trying to find grip on the rear end. And since you as the driver are actually really far back, you have this excellent connection to the nuances of that rear end. This is actually a very communicative car. I am being very engaged by it for a multitude of reasons. One, it's loud, it's fast. The rear likes to lose grip all the time and the steering is fantastic. All the little details of what's happening in the road are being communicated through to me in such an excellent way. Oh, 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 oh I like this car. I like it a lot. I'm <laughs> having a really good time. I didn't really know what to expect, honestly. I've always wanted to drive one and it's very much whoop, exceeding my expectations. <laughs> it's wild. And even though you'd think, you'd think by looking at it, it would be this big, luxurious Mercedes long grand tourer, but it isn't. It isn't. It's it's so much more sports car than, than you'd think, which is just excellent. And the suspension is well, I think it's perfect. This is exactly what I want. Lots of travel, not too harsh, but stiff. Sports car stiff. Oh. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. All of a sudden, I have this insane desire to drive the Black Series. This is a very, very desirable car for me. I. I don't know why, but for some reason, it's it's ticking all of my boxes. Ticking, not tickling. It's not tickling my box. 
Uh, he's doing that actually a little bit. I haven't driven a Mercedes in a long time that's made me giggle quite like this one. This is a good car. Okay. No, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. yes. <sighs> Let's just enjoy it for a minute. It drives really well, by the way. It does. Like, yeah. like actually surprisingly well. Yes. I didn't quite expect it to be as it's engaging still, it's as It's still this. edgy, though. It's still got that AMG, like, I'm Very scared. much, very much. <sighs> Just look at it. It's good looking. This is Le Mans Red. Le Mans Red. One of the options back then. I don't think I would do this in Le Mans Red. What would you do? I would do it in whatever that silver is. That's expensive. The Alu Beam Silver was twelve thousand and something dollars back then. Yes, and I think that that would be the one that I would do because I want it to look like a because what it is is a perfect modern reimagining of a three hundred SL. Got the long hood, the swooping lines, the gull wings. Give it him silver arrow silver. I think that's what I want. I think the shape is starting to date now. Nope. Only because they've come out with some very pretty. Well, I mean, the shape was successes. from the fifties. But I, they just did it again. Even the rear three quarter, I actually see, especially in the red, I see like a Gen One, Gen Two Viper um, on the C pillar. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I think I think the rear is where it loses me a bit. Like the tail lights and, the, and it, it kind of is soft. But yeah, from from here and from the very very front, directly. It facing. looks so good, seriously. So very good. And then there's the convertible, which even though there was a convertible way back when, yeah, it doesn't seem to be as desirable. The prices are very different. It's uh, it's so much cheaper. Well, you lose the gullwing. And that is worth the money. But so basically the convertible is it's, a discounted version of this car. It is so worth the money though. Like if I was, if I was like looking for one of these as a buyer, which I'm really not because there, how much is this? The, this one's priced at 330 something. 330, so like what, yeah. 200 and something US. This would be what I would look for. I would not do the convertible because for me, it's pointless unless you have this because being with this car driving it being in its presence today is one of those things that makes you go it really feels like it should have held its value the way that it did well the, all the naturally aspirated heroes of like the 2000s they've yeah. all done that they've all yeah. held on but i mean yeah I mean, it's got a giant hood giant hood. i mean you, you, we if we point this south we're in toronto right now the the front's going to be in buffalo <laughs> yes all right and if you open this you'll realize just how pointless most of it is. Yeah, okay, just what do you... There it is, good, yep, you did it. Hmm, just wanna open it a bit further. Yeah, keep going. Just a bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> there it is, service position, baby. Whoever designed this car didn't wanna be closed in anywhere. Everything no. must open the maximum <laughs> open amount. Up. That is absolutely absurd. I know. Isn't that neat? So That's... you can see that from like here forward, Pointless. Just air. No, it's all air. It's all cooling. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's the air boxes are there. The huge amounts of cooling. It's just. I think it's just. Even if they. Even if they told me. Oh no, this is just for styling. Yeah. I'd be like, sure. Give it to me. I, I, I don't care. It well, would look so stupid if the, the nose was here. The generation after this also had a very long hood. It's only the new, new, new one that looks a lot more normal. The new. Has bigger. a lot of new. It's only new. Well, there's new, been a few new. since. Yeah. So the latest, latest one, the one that we haven't driven yet. That yes. one's sort of gone a bit more pedestrian looking, a bit more... Also, that, that one has taken quite a fall from grace. This is AMG Whoa. built by AMG. We haven't AMG. driven it a yet, though. No, we haven't, but it's based on a what? This is an SL, isn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. This is fully ground up. It's softened. An AMG. It's softened, yeah. Who, who made this engine? Who we got? Dennis? Dennis? De... Dennis Deman. De... 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 You are Deman, Dennis. I'm sure I'm butchering your last name. Uh, in fact, every time we've read a name on an engine cover of an AMG, yeah. that person has somehow reached out to us and said, that was me! So, so Dennis Deman? Yeah. De Man? Dennis Deman? You make great engines and you're not very good at writing your last name in cursive. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so you could get, there was an option for a carbon fiber bay cover thing. So it was a, right. it was Oh, I see, that would cover this up. Yeah, it was five oh. grand. Five grand? Yeah, which, and now you can't get them. Oh. I went on the forum and everyone was like, how do I get one? And everyone's like, you can't. And there's like, cool, okay. People, you might be able to buy one for like 20 grand. That's what they, <laughs> that was the prices they were talking about. Oh my God. But it dressed up the engine bit a bit. Potentially pointless. I'm not sure that means it. Look at this thing. No, exactly. It's a great looking engine. There's also carbon fiber um, wing mirror covers and yeah. some other carbon fiber bits. This doesn't have that. No. However, I would, I, 
I, I wouldn't pretend to be a black series. I think the black series is where this shape shines, where the two silver blades become one black blade with this with the giant. Yes, that's very cool. I don't agree though because I think this car, in its simplest, cleanest form, is where it's. The you're going to say special. that, and then one day we're going to drive the black series, and you're going to go. Oh, it's all about the black series. <laughs> this <laughs> this will probably happen exactly like that. But right now, I still think I would take this in silver. I don't want any colors on. No, no brake calipers at all. Right. It, it, wait. How do I what do you, this? What are you doing? How do you do this without having a friend? I, I, I'm asking. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it is. That's heavy. See? You what? don't need any friends now. You've never needed them. It's okay. See, Just mom. Spend. Time you thought alone. if I moved country, I'd make friends. You're wrong. <laughs> that feels quite heavy. And this, this, you know, this is the SLS, right? It's the yeah. super light sport. Yeah. It's not that light though, no, is it? 37 and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it feels light when you drive it just because of weight distribution, so okay. But yeah, there's luxury still. Here and in the inside. Yeah, let's have a look. Okay. Ugh. Okay. It's not easy to get in. Up, <laughs> I will say. No, no, you don't need to do that. No, good. No, because we'll just leave them up because it's too hard to reach them. That is quite hard, yeah. Yeah. So you, back then you could buy a leather strap from Mercedes if you were vertically challenged. If you are vertical, not like us who I could who can easily reach it. <laughs> you can actually buy a strap. I did not know that. Yeah. That is hilarious, actually. Anyway, once you are in um, and you've managed to somehow not scuff this little bit of Alcantara right here. Um, did you do it? Or you no, didn't do I it? didn't. I missed it. And it took me. It wasn't easy. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's simple. Yes, exactly. Simplicity is beauty. Quote me on that. Uh, I don't think I made uh, that up, but I think it's of the time. I, I this door is slowly lowering itself. I think it yeah, is. Yeah, they're not powered. They don't no. really, yeah. I, th I, I think the gauge cluster is beautiful. I think all of this is just fine. No, I, what, no, I love the way that these buttons have their own shape and they're slightly canted towards but, the driver. Uh, Kia Seltos has that. Okay, that was mean and untrue. The Kia Seltos does not have those buttons, but a VinFast VF8 kind of does? Okay, I'm wrong and I'm sorry. Yeah, what, what you, can we start it? Can we just start yes, it? we can. can I hear it. Because oh, what oh, Kia oh, Seltos oh, does oh, not oh. have. It's gonna give me a. It's gonna scream at me in German for a few seconds here. I'm just guessing. Press it. Ah, there you can go. clear it. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> Last time we were revving a car here it was the LC500. I, you know what? Engine for engine, those are very comparable yeah. in terms of noise and, and character. Yeah. Yeah, 100. I w this engine has less power than the new C63. I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about I the new C63. I don't care at all. <laughs> I don't think anyone cares don't about the new C63. Care. Turn that off. Um, no, it's no. perfectly nice in here. We've got leather surfaces, stitching, yeah. Alcantara everywhere. Alcantara is really There's nice a bit here. of plastic going on and an overlay, you know, overly done amount of buttons, including blank. But what if you need to manually put a phone number in? I don't think I've done that. The only, like ever. the only time I type a phone number in now is yeah. if I get a random call and I don't know who it is, I quickly Google the number and, yeah. and then don't pick up. That's so if time I can't it. Google a number in this, I'm not interested. <laughs> but we've got heated seats. Uh, you know, this is very much a grand touring sports car. Missing, some, right? missing a few options here. So I've, I've looked on Google. I haven't seen these filled in ever on this car. Interesting. I don't know if there are options that can fill those in. Listen, that would be pretty bad. For a $200,000 car. If there's no options and you're paying this much money when this car came out and they redesigned everything, why not make a new panel, move these buttons closer together? Maybe I'm wrong, maybe there are things, but I've looked at the options and the only things that you can really get in here, uh, apart from what we already have, because there's a lot of adjustment here. Like these seats, you can change the bolsters. Yeah, the bolsters down here. Funnily enough though, the buttons are not on the door. In Mercedes, I'm so used to reaching for the door. There's a real good reason for that. They're gone. The door is currently gone. They've gone yeah. flying off. I can't reach it. Uh, but we have the Bang & Olufsen, which I think was like six, seven, something, a lot of money back then. Yeah, a lot of money, um, I'm sure. But yeah, seats are otherwise quite comfortable. You can get some funky two-tone interiors. Uh, MVL Leasing, the guys that gave us this car for today, yeah. they had the uh, the SLS convertible in the showroom. Right. So that was that had a carbon fiber surround here. This is more Interesting. of like a, what's this? It's like an alloy? Yeah, it's like, an, it's like a, I don't know if it's actually aluminum, but it's it's not plastic, basically. Okay, it feels good. Yeah, theirs was carbon fiber and it had like a white interior, so. I think I I think I like this. The, the, the alloy matches here on the gauge cluster to there. I love the look of this. It's very simple, it's very clean. It's going to age very well. It's going to age very well. Yeah, the only thing that's, that's going to hurt it is the amount of buttons. The, the, phone, the phone. 
The phone. You know, the Countach has a phone. Like, it's it's <laughs> yeah. an old... Yeah, this is only one step further than that. The yeah. physical phone is gone. <laughs> but uh, this little pad right here is interesting, isn't it? Like, it's this, it's this squishy, soft AMG leather pad. And why would that not be like a plate of aluminum or something? Maybe so that you, you kind of have to sit on the ledge I think you can to get in? You can replace it. I don't know. You kick doors all the time. I've done a really good job. You should because be proud of gone. me. Because they're gone. Because they're gone. Oh, you're right. Fair enough. I couldn't reach it. Also, there's these here, right? You pop up and then there's like the little holes in here. I think that's to, uh, to diffuse the light so that you look very handsome when you're doing your... Oh, is that Whatever. the secret? Yeah. That's why every mirror I've looked in, obviously, has never had diffused light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was for the traffic light so you can see through. But then that doesn't make any sense because that would be for nighttime. And then why would you be blocking it at night? Would it would be the day? Actually, yours makes more sense because you'd be able to see the traffic light through. If you have to no, really but you, quickly but you wouldn't, check your teeth or something. No, but right? you can't because, like, put your hand far away. I don't know. These are pointless. We wait is the reason. Saving weight. Saving, saving weight. Wait. Super light. Super <laughs> That's light. what it is. Anyway. I really like the interior of this car. I like the steering wheel, the seating position. Uh, I don't like how close the roof is to my head. And I also don't like the feeling of when you close the door, that thing, you're like, but what if it comes a little lower this time? It doesn't hit me though. <laughs> it, got, it, it arches over the head though. It's a bit scary. Anyway, um, I think it's time for a conclusion. Yeah. Because this is quite a legendary car and I'm glad that we got to drive it. The SLS is a car that maybe slipped under our radar a little bit too much. It drives as well as it looks. It's got a mean attitude and timeless aesthetics. It's also a car that is relatively easy to live with every day. As for the price, well, the fact that the Gullwing door-equipped models command such a hefty premium suggests that most of that value is a little inflated. But then, perhaps buying an SLS without wings is a little bit like buying a bird without wings. And as cute as Kiwis are, we'd still probably find an SLS that could fly. Thanks for watching.